Here it comes from the 444RR Studios in Maryland. It's the Talk is Right, the only you cast with game shows, magic, and more. And now, here's the star of the Talk is Right. 444RR. All right, it's time for you for the Talk is Right for this week. It is the fifth episode. It is the 29th of August. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with the Price is Right news. Season 40, the anniversary special, is coming up. It's coming up September 4th, so make sure to watch that. If you can't watch it, make sure to DVR it, because I think that should be pretty exciting. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear a spoiler, just jump a few seconds ahead in the video. I'll give you time to do that now. Okay. The spoiler is there's no Bob Barker appearance. Bob Barker did not appear on the 40th anniversary special. Don't know if he wasn't asked to be on the 40th anniversary. Don't know if he just didn't want to do it. I don't know, but specul- But there's no Bob Barker appearance. Also, congratulations to model Gwendolyn Osborne. She's pregnant. That was announced back on the Mother's Day show. But also, Rachel Reynolds is now pregnant. We're going to lose two Price is Right models this season due to maternity leave. Speculation online is that's the reason why they're having the male model search is because of the fact that they uh, are going to lose two models. I don't know if that's true or not. We'll might, Maybe we'll find out. Who knows? Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit now. Oh, and the season, 40, uh, season 41 premiere of The Price is Right starts September 24th. Let's shift gears a little bit now, and we're going to go to GSN's Pyramid. If, you want, if you're excited about GSN's Pyramid, I'm really excited about it. Hosted by Mike Richards, you're going to be able to see a special sneak preview of it. Thursday, August 30th, which is tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Time. So make sure you're watching if you want to see a sneak preview of it. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. I'm excited about this. I think that's going to be a great show. I can't wait to see it. Also, September 3rd, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is coming back from syndication. And Meredith Vieira is hosting it again for the 11th season. It's pretty exciting. And they've had a set change. The set change is they've shrunk the audience down and they've made the question screen, the screen that shows the question, they made it like 10 times bigger. Not really 10 times, but they made it bigger. So pretty exciting for them. Also, if you're in the Los Angeles area, the Southern California area, or you're planning to visit, or you live or plan to visit, and you want to be on a game show, they're now casting for a new NBC game show from Howie Mandel and the, and the producers of Deal or No Deal called White Elephant. Why does that name sound familiar? It's going to be just like the old holiday-themed party game where contestants select unmarked boxes from a warehouse containing millions of dollars in prizes. Each contestant is faced with a decision to keep his or her prizes that have been revealed or swap it for someone else's unopened box. When only two contestants remain, they must decide to steal or share the prizes they've earned during the game in a prisoner's dilemma end game. So, you know, this can be pretty exciting. I think the White Elephant game is going to be a great game show. I honestly do. I love Howie Mandel. I hope he also not just produces, but also hosts it, too, because I love Howie Mandel. He's great. And I think this good game is going to be pretty exciting because somebody could have, let's just say, a motorcycle in their box. You know, like a picture of a motorcycle. Say, you've won a motorcycle. Would you like to trade that away or would you want to keep it? And they're like, I want to keep it. The next box could be open, could be a brand new car. So I'm excited about this. Uh, not saying that cars are going to be in, uh, part of the prizes, but they could be. So I'm excited for this White Elephant game show. More than likely, it's going to probably air during the Christmas time frame. It's probably going to air during Christmas. So during the holidays, just like that old, just like that show with uh, Ben Bailey from Cash Cab, that uh, Who's Still Standing show. That one uh, premiered during Christmas. That I probably that probably won't come back. I didn't really like that as much. I thought the gameplay was too slow. I thought GSN's Russian Roulette was faster of gameplay. You need to have quick gameplay for a show like that. Speaking of GSN, congratulations to them. Their American Bible Challenge debuts at a jaw-dropping 1.73 million viewers. It is their highest rated show ever. Ever. The long-reigning champion was the Big Bucks uh, documentary, The Pressure Luck Scandal, with Michael Larson. They had a special on that, and they showed the show in its entirety and had how he did it and everything. That was the highest-rated um, show for a long time, but now the American Bible Challenge is even higher at 1.73 million. Plus, it got a .4 rating in the key demographic of 14 to 49. So, good congratulations to them. I have a feeling this show is going to be on for a while. I, I missed it when it was on for its premiere, but that's all right. It's their new episodes will be premiering, so I'm so excited to see that. 
So I'm excited. Also, the bad news came for Beat the Chiefs, which by any other standard would have great numbers, but dropped off huge. It lost almost 70% with only 521,000 viewers. We'll see how it does in week two, but I don't know. That might drop off. I mean, 70% of viewers, they, you know, Beat the Chiefs was on right after the American Bible Challenge. And of 70% of the people who watched the Bible Challenge didn't watch Beat the Chiefs. We'll see. All right, so also Steve Harvey's Family Feud premieres uh, all, uh, premieres September 17th, so make sure to watch that. This season looks funnier than any other season, so I'm really excited about that. Also, uh, I forgot to mention, Millionaire's season starts next week on September 3rd. Okay, now we're going to move into the YouTube's Speaks for this week. And the winner, I can't declare a winner. I got two YouTube Speaks for this week and two video responses. I think more people posted videos but only two people did a video response. You have to post them as video responses if you want them in the running for the winning. And so make sure you do that. Post them as video responses. Uh, but the winners this week, I can't declare a winner. Both of you tied Pepsi 9072 and the Zachman 18. Both of you are our winners for this week. I loved your, video, uh, I loved your response. This is the TPIR 40th anniversary um, guesses to your um, predictions. So now, this week, YouTube Speaks. Let's get into that. All right, now, the YouTube Speaks for this week. Uh, you probably noticed my um, little comment I posted on my channel about um, I'm very scared for this week's YouTube Speaks. I'm scared because I'm leaving the fate in your guys' hands. Uh, this week's YouTube Speaks is dares. Give me something to do. Dare me to do something. Um, there's a few rules to this. I will not make myself throw up by doing the cinnamon challenge. So don't ask me to do the cinnamon challenge because I will not do that. Also, I will not do anything with drugs, sex, or alcohol because I'm straight edge like that. So don't ask me to drink a beer on camera because I won't do that. So, but everything else is fair game. As long as your video response to this video is within those rules, you're going to get considered to do the dare. The best one, or maybe even the best two or three, if I get a lot of dares, the best ones are going to be considered and done live next week on The Talk is Right. I am like, I'm really scared about this. See what you all come up with. But also, this is your chance to torture me. So be creative. Do whatever you want to do. Be as creative as you want to be. Don't just post a video response like two seconds after this video goes up and says, can you give me a shout out? Because that's not creative. Okay. Do something creative. I want to see what you all come up with. So be as creative as you want, and you can make me look as stupid as you want or do whatever you want to do, okay? Um, but as I said, if your video is not within those rules, if you know you completely do something and I don't like it because it's not within those rules, it's not going to be considered. It won't be considered also if you don't post this. your video as a video response. Make sure it's a video response to this video because it won't even be considered. So post it as a video response. Can't stress that enough because last week for YouTube Speaks, I got some that were not video responses that I saw. They have to be video responses if you want to be considered. How, maybe you're asking yourself, how do you do a video response? I'm not sure. Well, in the comment box where you post comments, click on the comment box and to the right of the comment box, it will say post a video response. You click on that and it's going to give you an option of all of your videos that you have uploaded to YouTube, click on the one you want to submit as a video response. You click that, and it's going to say, this author is going to have to accept your video response before it's posted. It will send me an email and also send me a message on my YouTube inbox that says, I have a video response. I will accept it, and it will be submitted as a video response. So do that if you're not trying to do a video response. Okay, let's move into the magic portion now of our, you, our talk is right for this week. All right, we're going to get into the magic-related segment of this show. First, we're going to talk about Daniel Rosenthal. Who is he? You might not know who he is. He's a teen magician in the Bay Area of San Francisco. He has received a $36,000 grant so he can continue performing his magic in local hospitals. The award comes from the Diller Teen Tacona Alum Awards. I know I mispronounced that. I'm so sorry. The awards are given by the Helen Diller Family Foundation. The award is designed to inspire teens to do simple good by rewarding those that currently do. This is a great story. I love this. Uh, this is a quote from Daniel. There were so many sad patients, Rosenthal said. 
I saw how magic was such an international language and brings happiness to the saddest of people, end quote. He sat up performing his, uh, performing his magic in the cancer department of a local hospital one time. Someone approached him and said, this is the first time we heard laughter in here, end quote. From there, his nonprofit Magic is Medicine was born. The organization mobilizes professional magicians to perform at hospitals, schools, and rehabilitation and assistant living centers all across the country. This is an amazing story. Congratulations to Daniel. I think that was a great story. And it sends, it, it makes my hair stand up on my arm. It really does. I love that story. You know, more magicians should, I should do this too, perform in hospitals. I think it's great. I mean, I think that's great. And, you know, if, if you can, excuse me, if you can provide laughter to uh, people in hospitals, I think you should. I think it's great. I think any, I think any entertainer should do that. Maybe, a, you know, a ventriloquist should go in there or something, you know, somebody. Okay. Now, I have to talk about my favorite person in the whole wide world. I have to say, Eric Diddleman knocked it out of the park last night on America's Got Talent. If you missed Eric Diddleman, he did the most amazing mentalism thing ever, 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 ever. He took a picture of Howard Stern, the one that Howard Stern drew on the first show that he was on. He took that picture, blew it up, had Howard Stern color it in. He revealed his picture, and they matched. I can't, it doesn't even sound that cool when I talk about it. You've got to watch the video on NBC.com. Go to NBC.com slash America's Got Talent. Click on Eric Diddleman's page. Watch his act last night because it was great. He also did a trick where he had the audience at home and in the studio audience think of two simple shapes and the simple shapes matched. I mean, they didn't match for most people, but... Or most people, they did match. A few of them didn't get it, but most people got the shape correct, including myself watching on TV. So, Eric Dittleman, I applaud you, my friend. I back you 110%. I really, really do. I think this guy is great. He needs to win this show. A, a magician needs to win America's Got Talent, and I think he hopefully he'll go to the finals. There, this year, there's no top 10 acts, so there's only going to be three people moving on tonight. I hope Eric Dittleman is one of them. He is somebody who I would go to Vegas and pay $70, $80 to see in a big theater. I really would. Some of the other acts that have been on talent this year, I wouldn't go pay to see them. But Eric Dittleman is one of those acts this year on talent I would go to Vegas and pay 80 bucks to see. So Eric Dittleman, I hope something good comes out of this. Even if you don't make it through tonight, I hope you... Go to Vegas and just blow it up because I love Eric Dillman. He's really, really cool. Okay, let's get started now uh, with the magic review portion of the show. And today I'm going to review cardistry. I love this trick. All right, so cardistry, it's an amazing effect. Let's show you how this works. Uh, let's, let's explain the trick. So the spectator would say stop whatever they want. We'll say they stop right there. This is going to be their card. I'm not going to look at it. Place it back in the deck. And now... This is going to be a really weird trick, but I'm not going to do the trick. No, a great thinker is going to do the trick. Leonardo da Vinci. You all looking at me like I'm weird. But no, this is actually true. Let me show you. Da Vinci is going to do this trick. Watch. If I just go like this. There's one. There's two. All right, watch. There's three. I'm not the best painting in the world. I'm not the best artist, so my painting's not coming out very straight. Now, what was your card? Is it the five of diamonds? And there we go. Right there, the Mona Lisa's holding the five of diamonds. And that is cardistry, where you make the Mona Lisa appear. I've got to tell you, this trick kills, okay? This is one of the best effects in magic. People will not expect the Mona Lisa to appear. Spectators, when you do magic for them, already have this, not, this mindset that, oh, he's going to do something stupid, like, oh, is this your card? But when they see the Mona Lisa appear, it just rocks. This trick kills. It really does. Um, 
There's another version of this trick that is put out where it's a brain scan image, where it's a picture of a brain and the card's in the brain. I don't like that one as much. I like the Mona Lisa better. I don't know why. I just like the Mona Lisa better. So, it's this is a really, really good trick. Uh, the, another good thing I like about this trick is there are different changeable cards. So, if you're doing the trick for somebody, and let's say you're doing a walk-around magic at like a restaurant or something, and you don't, and so, or you're doing like somebody's already seen you or something, and they saw you do the trick once, they can watch you do it again, and it's a different card. So that's what I like about the trick. One thing I don't like about it, though, the get the secret to the trick. It's not a gimmick, but it's a secret. Requires the use of a close-up pad. If you don't know, if you don't know what a close-up pad is, it's this thing. Normally, magicians perform on the front side of this close-up pad, but you need the rubbery side for this to work. The only bad thing is you can't just do the trick and perform it because you can't, you can't do it. You have to have a close-up mat, and most magicians who perform walk-around don't have close-up mats. It's tricks, and that's the only bad thing about the trick, but everything else about the trick is good. So if you do have a close-up pad and you want to do this trick, it's a great trick. It's called cardistry. I definitely recommend picking this up. Now we're going to move into our last few minutes of The Talk is Right. All right, well, that's it for The Talk is Right this week. I do want to talk about one other quick little thing. I want to talk about the Little League World Series. It's over. Uh, that stinks. But uh, I'll tell you who won. Japan takes the Little League World Series title from Tennessee. So Tennessee won the U.S. championship, but the international championship goes to Japan. Uh, 12 to 2. They got cream. Tennessee got cream. Tennessee was a good team. They had a good pitcher this year, but they just couldn't take Japan. So, congratulations to Japan. Also, I want to give a big shout out to, uh, everyone who's at camp this week. This week is Sorcerer Safari Camp in Canada. It's a magic camp where young magicians can go and get taught by real magicians up there. You know, I really wish I knew about Sorcerer Safari when I was little. I would have loved to have gone to Sorcerer Safari in Canada. I think it would have been really cool. Week of uh, jam-packed magic. You go learn magic. You learn how to uh, do your stage presence. You learn uh, how to perform better. And you also get to do an extracurricular activity like juggling or something like that. So I really, really wish I had known about it when I was little. But I don't even think it was around when I was little. But uh, so... Uh, so I want to send good wishes to everybody at Sorcerer Safari 2012, including Mystical Marco. Mystical Marco, or if you don't know, is Magic Wands 98 on YouTube. And he's also Mark Corietta, known in the magic community as Mark Corietta. And uh, he's up there. I think he's a counselor, I think. So congratulations to everybody up there at the uh, Sorcerer Safari Camp 2012. All right, that's going to do it this week for the talk is right. Remember to, uh, to, to participate in the YouTube Speaks program for this week, which is going to be dares. Give me dares for this week. Dare me to do something. Oh, and also, this is not a requirement for your video, but if you want, also say, I dare you to blank. You know how you can just say, oh, I want you to do this. That's fine. But do some dares. Uh, just don't hurt me too bad, please. Actually, if you hurt me, that's going to be a disqualification. But anyways, I'm going to stop rambling now, and we're going to end this video from all of us here at the 444R Studios. For myself and the Zachman18, our wonderful announcer, we will see you next Wednesday for an all-new Talk is Right. And don't forget to watch my new show, Magician 101, which is where I give you tips on how to be a better magician. And that's going to be every Monday. And Talk is Right every Wednesday. We'll see you next week. Take us out, Zachman18. The Talk is Right is sponsored by the following. Buying a gift for the guy that has everything? Log on to PetsOverNights.com. We got exotic pets galore, including cobras, tigers, manatees, and white rhinos. All delivered overnight. PetsOverNights.com. Delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. Meow. This is the Zachman 18 speaking for The Talk is Right. A 444RR production.